Welcome back, and it's time for our very first hot topic, and we have Kola Oluwadari, Deputy Director of Setup, who is joining us to take a look at Sarah taking the president to court over some monies, $2.1 billion and 3.1 trillion Naira public funds that are missing. Good morning to you, Kola. Good morning. All right. So, um, first of all, I am one of those who are very proud of Serap. In fact, if you were here, I'll probably give you a handshake. Yeah. Because Serap, just like the press, uh, the fourth estate of the realm, trying to put governments on their toes, very good. Um, first of all, this administration is just two weeks old. Uh, even though I'm very excited that you have done this, which you've done, taking this president to court to bring these issues to fore, I don't know. Is it not too early in the day, or is it because Sarah feels this government needs to act fast so that those who should be apprehended should be apprehended before they disappear? Give us a clearer picture of what's going on here. Thank you very much. It's not too early. Good governance and the benefit of good governance is not too early. And you will recall clearly that one of the first actions of the president when he was sworn in on the end of May this year was to announce the removal of subsidy as it were. According to him, it has been removed already. He just made a formal pronouncement to that effect in his acceptance speech. So it's not too early uh, to talk and to compare government or on issues of good governance. And to put it into context, the removal of this is not about whether the removal of subsidy is good or bad. This is an action predicated on the, the, the good governance itself. The Auditor General of the Federation is at that point, of the President, not necessarily this particular President, but he answers to the Presidency. And that's very clear by virtue of Section 85, and it is 6 of the 1999 Constitution. And in fulfilling the statutory responsibility, he has provided reports which state several that billions of Naira are missing and not accounted for as public funds. And the Auditor General has gone ahead in this report to also mention the various NDAs in this regard. So what Sarah has done, is basically to look at that general's report and extract details that pertain to well up to the payment from various agencies of government that deals with such and to bring it to the fore, telling the president that in making sure that he's really acting on the, in the interest of Nigerians, why not look into these funds that the Auditor General said is missing and make sure that they are recovered and put to the public funds. Perhaps this might go into whatever palliative measure intervention government wants to do, or perhaps it might even remove the need for removal of subsidy in the first place. But these are, these are public funds that simply could not be accounted for. Two, over $2 billion, standard just is appearing to see there. And we're talking of good government, we're talking of transparency and accountability. And the president is asking Nigerians to tighten their belts, to take steps to accommodate the harshness of this rest of the removal in the first place. When government is not taking steps, we either court is not spending or even recover funds that are simply been needed. And we are written to the president. And that was um, uh, to, to, um, a week plus ago, asking him to take the steps. Give him more or less uh, three days to do that, and he's yet to do that. And that is why we're taking the steps to go to court, uh, to have the judiciary intervene in this instance, to compel the government to do what they ought to do by the oath of office it took, by the constitution and the interest of Nigerians. Okay, well, you are one of the lawyers of Serap uh, that have uh, represented Serap at the Federal High Court as you're filing this suit. And part of what you're praying for, in addition to these monies, is you're seeking, among others, an order of mandamus to compel President Tinubu to direct the anti corruption agencies to promptly probe fuel subsidy payments by governments since the return of democracy in 1999, name, shame, and persecute suspected perpetrators and recover any proceeds of crimes. All right, one of the things that I'm excited about this is persecution. Some will ask the question, you have been taking governments to court uh, before now. Um, how would you rate the level of justice gotten from all the suits filed against governments before now? And what hope do you have that something good is going to come out of this? Uh, thank you very much. Justice, as it's understood, is, is called a three-way traffic for the, the complainant or the victims, as it were, um, for the accused and then for the society at large. So in this instance, we're looking at the justice sector, and the justiciability, as it were, of the public interest litigation we have before the court. The justice of the matter has been defeated largely by the government. And in, in this instance, the executive, 
who over the years have found ways to disdain the rule, uh, the judgment of the court by failing to implement them. It is. It cannot be said that a citizen has erred or done anything wrong in going to court because the constitution is very clear as a principle of the rule of law, which also plays fits into democracy. That the judiciary, as an arm of government, will be the final arbiter, deciding matters, duties, and obligations between individuals, between individuals and government, and even between governments themselves. And so, going to court is not wrong. The justice of the matter has been defeated largely because the executive has refused to obey the lawful orders of court. And we've got to enjoy a lot of judgments in our favor, and in that means, in the interest of Nigerians over the years, that this government has simply refused uh, to obey. And that does not speak well of this government, which reminds me of the, of the, of the promises made by the president yesterday in, in, in his address. Of course, he also praised the judiciary, and he said that he is empowering the judiciary as part of his own key point agenda of government. And the least the government can do in this instance, it is not enough to have judicial autonomy or no financial autonomy for the judiciary. The judgment of court must be obeyed. That is an integral rule, uh, part of the rule of law. So we are very confident that going to court is the best thing to do, is the right to do this instance. And we have faith in the judiciary that they will do the needful and side with the Nigerian people in this regard. Because after all, even the members of the judiciary are citizens first and foremost. They bite well like every one of us. They will feel the page like every one of us. And no Nigerian, whether a judge or not, whether a lawyer or just a citizen, will be happy to know that billions of naira are missing and we are doing nothing to retrieve it. And so we, we believe that the judiciary will, will, will do the right in the system. And the judiciary has been over the years, even with the slow pace of the judiciary, which is also one of the basis of our other development, the judiciary has linked up with staff in trying to determine this matter on the merit. The, the executive has always been the, 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 the challenge. The executive. Yeah, well, <clears throat> one of the things that um, the present administration promised is the obeying the rule of law and all that. So far, uh, has the body language uh, told you that this is going to be seen through? Uh, I've always wondered what the body language thing meant. Uh, I'm not uh, and even we didn't leave his head as it were. How much more we did body language of a human being. And that the concept of body language itself is one of the basis of the challenges we have as democracy. Um, institutions of government must be strong to take steps on their own accord. We naturally we need not go to court to compel the president and to direct the anti corruption agencies, the SEC, the police and the ICP to do their job. Because the law that sets up these agencies of government are very clear as to the duties and obligations and the extent and the scope of their power. And that again speaks to the weakness of the institutions we have and the powers of the presidency, which appears to be uh, very huge, but which is little used in favor of Nigerians. And that speaks to the political will of the president. Being the commander in chief, he, he sits in the highest office in the land. And so, with the enormous, enormous powers that he has, the least it could do is to fight corruption. And fighting corruption is not by address. It is by the actions that the government takes in the public interest. So in this instance, he, he didn't find it very hard to remove something to speak so uh, on his address. He didn't find it very hard to promise to obey to the rule of law. Why should he find it very hard in this instance to take steps? And in this particular instance, to make sure that these allegations are investigated. Perhaps it might be too early to indict this administration for uh, not uh, obeying the rule of law. It's more or less two weeks in office. And they are yet to be appointed even key officers of state. It might be too early for us to wait them in this instance. But ultimately, in this regard, the courts will determine whether the president ought to take this step or not in the interest of Nigeria. But we expect the president to still act. And so um, we, 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 I'm sure we will have this day in court. And it will be very interesting to see the defenses that government will bring up in this case. In this All right, you filed the suit on Friday. Uh, today is Tuesday. Um, bring us to speed as to what next and how the process is supposed to play out. I did the administrative and the assignment of cases. Where the cases will be assigned to a particular judge who will hear that matter and then uh, ensure there are several processes in the adjudication of justice. But the first step is for the court to uh, hear these through our lawyers. This is an expert area, uh, expert application for leave. So once the court grants leave, that is the first step in the process. And then the process will be served on the president and then we, we take it from there. But the least we expect is that this kind of case should really be speedily dispensed with so that um, the effect will be readily seen by Nigerians. And speaking to that, 
the report of the auditor general over the years has really not been paid attention to, and that is one of the issues that we have in this country. An appointee of government, a public officer for that, for, for that matter, a public institution, cannot just issue reports and is disregarded by government. What other concerns do you have, apart from uh, the probing of the people involved in the uh, fuel subsidy fraud that you have already taken the federal government to court for? Um, because it, it may not be the only matter that you are concerned with that the present administration needed to have addressed but have not addressed. Maybe you're taking it gradually. So what next, like Maureen said, are we expecting? Uh, are you comfortable with everything else for now? Of feeling the pinch of uh, already at the high inflation, high level of unemployment, rising cost of goods and services, everyone feels it. And we know that the major cause of all these is corruption. And we know the reason corruption continues to try is the impunity that we see in the government. Mm. And one of these, those of text of those issues, the really high cost of government, and the high recurrent, our recurrent expenditure is still too high. Our debt profiles continue to grow. Government is taking no steps to cut the high cost of governance. We, we have not seen that, John. That itself, and, and the same government finds it very easy to tell the jails to tighten their belt, to sacrifice for the greater good. But we've seen, we've not seen government do that on the path. So that again brings us to the issue of wastage and corruption. We have so much that is falling through the cracks. It doesn't justify the huge debt profile. And frankly, even the things we see as physical, physical infrastructure does not justify uh, the huge load profile that they have. For instance, I'll give you a very good example. In the Auditor General's report in 2018, where the Auditor General said, and this is a public document, by the way, it can be seen, it can be downloaded from the uh, website of the Auditor General of the Federation. He said in the 2018 report that more than 103 ministries, departments, and agencies exceeded their personnel costs, that is their recurrent expenditure, by 641 billion there. Do you know what that means? It means more than three MDAs simply spent more than they had budgeted and approved to spend for that particular year as recorded as expenditure. And this is not capital expenditure. These are just allowances and payouts. And that is just for 2018. So you can imagine what happened in 2019, what happened in 2020. And these are just 103 MDAs. We're not even talking of the president. We're not talking of the governors. We're not talking of other public officers. So this drain needs to stop. These are some of the issues we're looking at to ensure that government does the right thing. The aim of this public research education is not to embarrass, it's not to harass. It is to ensure that government does the right thing. And when government does the right thing, we all feel it. We all bear the, uh, we all see the impact in our lives. We cannot just continue to spend like this. And then uh, keep borrowing, keep wasting funds, and expect uh, things to just work. And that is not how democracy is run. Uh, that is definitely uh, not in accordance with the rule of law. All right, so no date has been fixed yet for hearing of this sort. But, uh, Kola, let, let, let's talk to you a little bit about the workings of Serap. I remember speaking with one of your officials uh, some time ago, and he alluded to the fact that you guys do have, um, you get threatened sometimes in the course of fighting for the masses. Talk to us about this. Yes, it's one of the hazards of the job, and it's, it's rather unfortunate that, well, of course, we are at, it is the right of government or any party in court for that matter uh, to have the legal representation in court. But it is unfortunate to see that the bulk of the public interest education that was filed also borders on access to information. And that is basically freedom of information request. Yes, there are, but citizens of Nigeria is asking government for information, basically, which is in consonance with the freedom of expression provisions of the Constitution. And would that government defend in this case of the court of naturally they have the constitutional right to do so. But defending why you should ask, give access of, of, uh, to information to a citizen doesn't speak well of the rule of law. And sometimes also the hazard of the job includes some of the steps government takes. We've had court, political court awarded against us in court before, simply for filing public interest litigation, which doesn't even affect the rights of several as well, apart from the fact that we're Nigerian citizens and we also live in this country. But these are these are cases that speak to the rights of Nigerians. For instance, the recent judgment that we got in court, uh, where the court uh, ordered the government to prove the, the, the loans gotten from China uh, to, to place infrastructure for the CCTV in Abu Dhabi. And that, got, that order is yet to be obeyed. That order, if it was obeyed, of course, would benefit all the Nigerians, not only residents of Abuja. And we have lots of cases like that. 
uh, that are paid in the court. So the fact that those cases get delayed, uh, as it were, it, 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 it affects the rights and obligations of the Nigerian citizens who would otherwise have benefited from this kind of judgment. And so, yeah, we do get some kind of public backlash from those who, who are either politically oriented or who think along religious and ethnic lines and who think that our advocacy is motivated along those lines. Of course, it's not. Good governance is something that anyone will benefit from, and that is what we do. And that's what we've been doing over the years, and really that is what we continue to do without uh, the uh, without uh, thoughts of tribe politics or religion. So your cases do get heard and justice is delivered. Can you tell us some of the cases that um, Serap has gotten victory over? And especially since yeah. 1999. Yes, we've had, uh, uh, there is this case we call the, um, uh, the pension judgment. We got that from Honorable Justice Ogutoibo of the Federal High Court Lagos. That was in 2018, that was in 2019 where the court gave judgment and compared the act of the General of Federation to challenge the legality of state pension laws and to seek a recovery of those funds that have been unlawfully paid out. And to put this in context, more than 20 states in Nigeria have laws that pay uh, pension to former governors and deputy governors, and these run into millions of naira for each state. And it's okay in some states, billions of naira. So put together these amounts of trillions of naira leaving the coffers of the state to private pockets. Every two to three years, as it were, depending on the promotion of those laws, these laws cannot be allowed to stand. It doesn't do. And to reason, particularly with the growing inflation, with the state of our economy, and with the huge debt profile, we cannot continue to borrow to sustain the lifestyle of few Nigerians when the government is appealing to larger Nigerians uh, to tighten their bonds. For instance, more than 130 million Nigerians are tend to be poor according to the National Bureau of Statistics. And what is the government doing in that regard? That judgment is 2019 is yet to be obeyed. We also have a judgment from the Federal High Court that compelled uh, the, the government to, re, to release details of amounts that have been spent on electricity and water uh, from 1999 till 2017 when we got that judgment. That judgment also is yet to be obeyed. And I've also mentioned the judgment for the Chinese loans and the CCD that government is yet to obey. We also have judgment from the ECOWAS court, uh, which incidentally cited in Nigeria, granting uh, orders against the government to do specific acts. For instance, uh, we have gone to the ECOWAS court to challenge the use of Section 24 of the Cyber Times Act by security agencies in Nigeria to prescribe the who to simply expressing the freedom of expression. So the court has been with us in line with the, with the with the um, African Charter on Human People's Rights, which Nigeria has ratified by the way and domesticated that the provisions of Section 24 of the Cyber Times Act is offensive to the provisions of the African Charter, which grants freedom of expression in Nigeria, and that is also uh, what is in our constitution in the freedom of expression. That judgment also is yet to be obeyed. We are not going to go to court. Uh, a public interest is based on to defend Nigerian citizens who are that cause to have their right to free. The case in point being Mr. Agba Jalingo will come to court in 2019 when uh, the same settlement for the Tabakandas was used uh, to unlawfully detain him and harass him. And the Equus Court, that's another case entirely, agreed with us and awarded 30 million dollars against the Nigerian state in his favor. That judgment is yet to be obeyed. And that speaks to the impunity with which government looks at government at court orders. And this is not the case with political cases. As you would know in Nigeria, political cases get stuck. If orders are gotten at the speed of life, but public interpretation that would benefit those of Nigerians do not get that treatment. And even when we get judgment, it will not get enforced. And it's it's really not just sequel of the practice of democracy by uh, those in the authorities, and it doesn't encourage the judiciary to do more in, in this regard. Okay, well, uh, we'll have to thank God for small mercies. <laughs> we'll have to thank God for the victories that you have had. And uh, a lot of Nigerians rely on uh, the good work of Serap. Like Maureen said, people are proud of Serap. Do more. Don't be afraid of the threats and all that. Uh, it's a service that you're doing to Nigeria, and we're glad that you're at the fore doing this. We hope that you will do even more than uh, you're doing right now. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Kola Oluwadari, uh, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Kola Oluwadari, the Deputy Director in SERAP, and we were looking into issues of fuel subsidy removal and the people who benefited from it and the need to probe them. The case is in court now, uh, SERAP against the federal government. Let's see how that plays out. For now, we'll just take a short break, and when we return, uh, we'll be talking about something else. Stay with us. <music>